back. Best job in the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's tremendous fun. Tremendous honour to be part of this incredible franchise, historic franchise. I was uh, pretty much like a giddy schoolgirl the day I found out. I think Anthony was too. And there was a point, I was just saying, there was a point in a callback, the only callback we did, we, we, they had us read together, and they were making some noises and faces behind the glass. And we looked at each other, and there was a sort of recognition that this might actually happen. Uh, and that was pretty, pretty meteoric. Yeah, it's an amazing, amazing franchise to be part of. Where did you draw inspiration for your portrayal? Because you can't really look at many of the other live-action Alfred. Not really, no. No. I mean, I th there's a, probably a hint of it in Kane, but, um, you know, I was, I, I just, I really went with my instincts when I was shown. It happened very kind of fortuitously. I was working on a project called Diablo 3, and they were trying to finish it. They were running three studios, and it's, I was normally directed on that project by Andrea Toyas, who's a well-known voice director. And they said, uh, oh yeah, you're here, good. Um, you're in that studio with Andrea. And I ran into the studio, because I, I knew they were on a time crunch. And Andrea Romano sitting there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hi. She goes, hi, I'm Andrea Romano. I said, yeah, I, uh, I've been trying to meet you for years. And she said, that's nice, get in the booth. <laughs> very cool, very frank. I was like, great, I just messed up my first meeting with Andrea Romano. I'll never work in animation again. And I went to the booth, did my thing, and then a couple of days later I got a call saying we'd love you to come and audition for Alfred, and I was completely surprised. And I was sent, not the image of the character that we have now, but I was sent a sort of approximation and a bit of a description, uh, and I, they wanted it within a couple of hours, so I recorded based on instinct and based on flying by the seat of the pants. I knew we weren't doing the sort of, the sort of you know, more upper class butler. I knew it was something that was a very different take, and I just went with what I felt. Um, and then a couple of days later, I was called in to read with Anthony. Uh, we recorded together in a little booth. I got on like a house on fire immediately. He's a lovely guy and a very easy guy to get on with. And, uh, and it was done. And before I knew it, I was involved in this gigantic, exciting adventure, you know, and that's, uh, it's been tremendous, tremendous fun. And now all this, it's, it's amazing. Has Alfred had a chance to, in the scripts you've done so far, the recordings you've done so far, has the character changed, has it evolved, is there sort of any kind of arc for Alfred, or is it all very much standalone? There is an arc for Alfred, and that is as much as I will say on the subject. Oh, the secrecy nonsense. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately, I guess it will be that. Um, yeah, no, there is. There is very much so, and I and I think there's a, there's a lot of just you know there's not justification, but the, the reasons why he uh, why he's been set in there the way he has become very clear. Um, uh, you know, it is a new imagining, but it is. I think they've taken an awful lot of care to stay true to the fundamental relationship between Bruce and Alfred. That relationship has not changed. Uh, it is one of compassion. It is one of a commitment that he made to his parents. Uh, he feels a huge sense of responsibility because of that. And he wants to make sure that should anything happen to him, he's slowing up, he's getting on, he's trying to do the responsible thing that, 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 you know, that Bruce will be taken care of. Um, I think for him, he blurs the lines between Bruce and Batman because he, he's the one guy in the world who really knows it's, it's one and the same guy. So there's a confusion there, and I think Bruce fights back to just say, no, there is a delineation. Batman's fine. You can look after Bruce. Um, and so that's a little interesting, you know, dynamic. I think it's probably played in the, with a slightly harder edge to it. Um, but I like that. I like that. I like that as long as the, the fundamental truth of that relationship, this is a historic franchise, this is a historic relationship. You don't want to sort of mess with that too much. I don't think we've messed with it. I think we've put a little cayenne pepper on it. I think we've enhanced it a little bit, and let's see what happens. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm proud of it. And, and I'm proud of... Uh, the way that we've honoured the franchise, I think, you know, I think it would be wrong to turn that on its head. I don't think that's what we've done. I think there's a lot of concern that that's what we've done. I don't think it's what we've done. This might seem like a weird question, but... Um, it won't be the first. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, along with doing, you know, uh, animated shows like Batman, you also do a lot of anime video game voices. Is there any difference in the process between doing voice work for an anime or video game compared to something like this? I'll go further and say I don't think there's that much difference in that, because I do a lot of on-camera stuff as well, and I, I think, you know, actors are there to serve writers, in my opinion. Being an actor is a huge privilege. Our job is to tell the truth of the story. And you have to adapt slightly in terms of the different media that you're doing that on. 
Um, I think it's often harder when you're just using voice. The more senses you take away from a performance, the more, you know, if I have to frown, I've got a frown in my voice. I don't have the image to work with. You know, I can't arch one eyebrow. I have to arch the eyebrow in my voice. Um, so you, you sort of learn over the years to hone those experiences. I think, you know, video games are getting more, much more realistic and naturalistic. So they're becoming, as the animation in video games gets more towards animation, then the characters become more truthful. We've seen The Last of Us has changed everything again. You know, I worked on Uncharted. That was a very much more sort of truthful stuff. Um, and then, you, you know, big monster stuff that you're doing on Diablo or whatever else, or Call of Duty where you're screaming for hours. Um, it's a different kind of truth, but it's still truth. You know, you're still trying to do that same thing. So um, the nice thing about this is that there's such a long arc. You know, we've done 26 episodes. Hopefully we'll start doing more seasons. That is really fun to explore a character and take take that, you know, distance and time with it and... and uh, and become a closer friend with it. I know that sounds kind of corny, but you know, I I, I, I really would defend Alfred now. You know, I love him. Um, he's he's been tremendous fun to play. Um, so it, yeah, I mean, it's different, but it's not. You're still fundamentally telling the story. I mean, in something like anime, the animation's done. There is a very specific anime language with the character designs, so you're honouring that too. But you're still fundamentally telling the story. Um, so I like to think that we've, we've sort of, that's what we always try and do. Honor whatever you're working with, you know? You brought up, the, you brought up a couple of times this historic franchise. Yeah. So is it fair to say that, you know, as opposed to just being a, a gig, an acting gig, that this is kind of cool to be part of a legacy now, that you are now a part of the history and legacy of Batman? The coolest. I mean, it's the coolest. It's amazing. And this has been the year of Batman for me, because I, I do Bane in Arkham Origins as well. And that has been, you know, that's a whole other thing, very different from Alfred. Um, so, so yeah, of course, it carries, a, a, I think it does carry an extra responsibility. I think you're sort of fighting taking on that responsibility, because if you think too much about that, then you get away from the character that you're playing. So I think you're always trying to sort of but you know, you're sitting there in the session, and suddenly Anthony and I look at each other and go, "Holy crap! This is this is happening!" Or we'll be taken up into an office and shown a clip. And when you first see it for the first time, I mean, it it sort of it isn't real until that point, you know? Because uh, initially you're just working on black and white. You're going in there, you're you're trying to do your job as best as you can. You're in the room with some really really high quality actors. Some of the guest stars on this show are ridiculously talented people experienced talented people Udo so Kier. sorry Udo Kier. for instance you know he's fantastic I mean and, and the, the other problem is that I'm howling on the mic just just trying to control my because he's so good um, so you, you don't want to be you thinking oh my god I'm doing Batman while you're working you're trying to get rid of all that so that you can just I'm playing Alfred and I've got to be truthful within that because in like I say the voice is more naked than the camera the microphone reveals more than a camera because it's isolated down to that one thing. So, you know, it's, it's pretty intensive work. You're focusing very, very hard for that, for that period of time. So I think it's when you walk out of the studio, you go, <laughs> you're driving home and you go, oh my God, I'm in Batman. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I never, yeah, I never imagined that. Yeah. That's very cool. In the first season, will we get to see uh, Alfred uh, interact outside of uh, the Katana Bruce group, like maybe with Lieutenant Gordon or anything? Uh, no, not so much with Gordon. Uh, there is a, there is a storyline that comes in, in that about some of Alfred's uh, life, um, but uh, I'm going to be really careful what I say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, listen, I think there's been a lot of concern that Alfred is some, you know, gun-toting sidekick. That is not happening in this series. I want to say that fundamentally. We are, we, he's very, it's very much true to the relationship uh, that, that's historically always been paid. So I, I think that would be wrong. That would be turning the franchise on its head, like I said before. And so um, there's a little history in there, but nothing that's too outlandish that's going to, you know, that's going to worry anyone, I don't think. Any chance of uh, Alfred's old outsider persona popping up down the line? No, I mean I think it's there. I mean I think we wanted to build that into the character. I think that's I think that's what's different about this take on Alfred is that we we we're being unashamed about who he was and that's very much a part of him. Uh, and I don't think that changes the character as radically as some people think. I think that's uh, I regard it as an enhancement. It gives him an extra bit of life. 
And I think it's good that he's a little tough. You know, in the first episode, he says, I'm sorry, didn't they tell you who I was? I'm the butler. <laughs> and it sounds kind of kick-ass. It's kind of fun, you know? Uh, so that's, I mean, I think that humor, that irony, that is, is still there. And I think, I think that's, you know, I think we've just embraced it more in the character. You know? Are you voicing any other characters that are going to be on the show? Yeah, 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 I did the Mac computer, um, who appears very robotically every so often. I, I did Lunkhead in the last episode. The nice thing about recording as a group is that suddenly you'll walk in and you're, you're, you've got Alfred on your script, and then you've got Cop number four, Agent number three, Ninja six, you know, and all this kind of other stuff, um, and a couple of other villains. And so that, that's, it's, it's an actor's dream, you know. Throw more at me, let me see what, you know, let's play. So are you going to play any major villains? Like, like a whole episode thing around a villain's ears going to be voicing. I can't tell you that sort of thing. <laughs> Good heavens, man. <laughs> Trying to get me fired? No, I, I, no, I don't think so. 